blitz heavy in a sense? Do, are people blocking you defensive line because they know those guys or those guys not getting through as much? I don't know. You know, it's kind of what the offense is giving us a little bit. You know, what we're trying to do. You got a young secondary that's, uh, you know, we're probably blitzing a little bit more, but that you might think. You're blitzing it with a young secondary, but part of it's about those guys get lined up and they're consistent with their key reads and all those things. When you start getting into playing your quarters, coverages, and all the different things that we we have the potential to do that we do usually over the over the course of the years. But right now, you've got so many young guys uh, that are very inconsistent and. In, a lot of little things. You, you practice something, and all of a sudden they move a little bit. Our guys don't adjust very well. So part of it's a combination of that. You know, it's uh, that we're probably trying to make things as simple for the back end. You know, I've got that guy, you know, as opposed to I have this area based on what this guy does. We're doing, taking the reading out of a lot of things, which there's, you know, some of those guys aren't ready yet from, you know, from that standpoint. Is that unique guys? this year? I mean, is, is that something you haven't dealt with in a while here? Yeah. I mean, you think you, you, when you look at all the – who we're playing with right now, you know. And, uh, yeah, you lose uh, two really good players, you know, in the back end. Um, you know, and, and then, you, you know, we've been scrambling at the rover spot since, you know, really day one of camp. Uh, you know, and then you lose Kendall. And then, you know, that's, that's – then next thing you know, you're playing with a bunch of freshmen back there, you know, that uh, – you had 15 days of practice in, in the spring, and uh, but just are not very are not ready to handle a lot of the adjustments and things that we need to make game day. Do you have a? I mean, is there a level of athleticism in some of those second guys, the linebackers, the secondary that allows you to do more blitzing because of? Well, we're doing it like I just said. We're doing it because of it helps them. Them, those guys are not having to read a bunch of stuff. You know, they're playing. And we're playing man coverage so they can get lined up and hopefully get lined up and play. You know, as much as anything, rather than, okay, I, if this guy releases here, I've got to take the, you know, just what I said, with those zones and that type of thing. So it's just all goes back to base fundamentals that a lot of these guys were second, even third team guys going into camp, you know, so. After watching the film, how, how would you evaluate both Andrew and Dion's play against Duke? Uh, Dion played really well. I think Andrew was okay. You know, he was okay. I thought they did a nice job. You know, they ran a quarterback draw out of a certain look. Uh, they and you know what we were doing what they were doing was trying to keep our edge guys from folding back inside who was responsible for folding back in but you know the uh, uh, the uh, you know the quarterback draw didn't beat us you know the speed option beat us when we busted an assignment uh, you know it was a pass one of their first uh, on their first drive was, you know it was a pass that beat us it was a busted assignment so those are the things that beat us uh, you know but uh, you know, Dion played really well. Uh, he had one penalty I'm sure he'd like to have back, uh, you know, one play. But, uh, you know, he played really well. A few weeks back, Coach Beamer mentioned getting Tremaine some more playing time. Do you see them, or Tremaine or even Carson, pushing for playing time? Uh, kind of still behind them? You know, they're still behind it. You know, right now, you know, we put in a uh, – you know, we got a couple defenses that were – it's, uh, you know, a staple for us. But, you know, Tremaine, Tremaine hasn't run it yet. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, – so that's kind of where we are with not just Tremaine. It's kind of the same situation with some of the back end guys. So uh, that's the frustrating part from a coaching standpoint. That, you know, we're, we're limited with what we're what we're doing right now, and that's that's not us. You what, know? what do you see from Boston College? They struggled offensively. Yeah, they're probably a lot like us in some ways, done defensively. You know, um, uh, d pretty decent up front. Uh, they've had injuries at their quarterback spot and running back spot, and. Um, you know, they're trying to find some answers and find what what's best fits them and their, their uh, personnel. And, uh, you know, they're dynamic on defense and uh, and really trying not to turn it over and, and play for the opponent on offense right now and being opportun opportunistic. But they're still big, physical, uh, getting into the multiple tight ends or, you know, multiple linemen and that type of thing. And, uh, you know, we've got to, you know, traditionally they're one of the better offensive lines and, uh, that we play year in year out, and, and they're they're new. All of them are new from you know last year, but then now they've got you know eight games under their belt, and you see a group that's uh, starting to gel and, and very physical. Is this a game where tackling is, is more important than others? It seems like they always are very no, powerful. I think, well, still. they're all uh, they're all critical. You know, uh, tackling is all critical because that's if you don't, you give up big plays. But uh, you know, these guys are consistent with what they do. You know, two years ago up there. 
you know, they had the big, the big running back that, you know, we, we really played well till one the last play of the game, just about, you know, Bonner played great and, you know, he stuck his, he's played, fit all day long where he was supposed to fit and in one play, he sticks his nose where, you know, he's not supposed to and they pop it for 60 yards. And I think that's what BC does a nice job of. They're going to be, they're going to do what they do and, and hope you, you bust, you know, and, uh, um, you know, that's kind of, they're going to they're gonna be, you know, whatever that plan is, they're going to work it and work it and work it and, and be consistent at it. How about the quarterback, who you anticipate facing? What, what's well, the yeah, I don't know, you know, who was going to be. The, 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 the one kid, uh, number five, um, you know, he got hurt last week uh, against Louisville and didn't come back. And, I'm, you know, we saw where he might have concussion-like symptoms or whatnot. I'm not for sure. Um, you know, I know they do a little bit more quarterback runs with him as opposed to the Flutie kid. Not to say that Flutie can't do it, but, uh, um, you know, that's – you kind of wondering what, what offense you're going to see then after, uh, you know, if he's not playing, if the was it, if five's not playing. So – but Flutie can throw the football. He's got good mobility. Um, you know, the other kid, though, can do all their quarterback runs and different things that they like to do that, you know, Steve likes to do with his offense going back to – uh, Syracuse to Florida, you know, all those things that, you know, the quarterback run scheme is, you know, has been big with them.